Okay, so let's try this next one. The right-hand side looks pretty simplified to me, so let's mess around with this side. Side squared x over cos squared x. And notice when I have fractions within fractions, I like to use a diagonal. It just helps me out. It doesn't take up quite as much room, but you don't have to do that over cos squared x. And fractions within fractions are, you know, a little bit cumbersome. So a trick to get rid of them is just multiply by a denominator that is common, so cos squared x and cos x, just to clear out all of the um, fractions. So this cos squared x will actually cancel with that one. I'll just be left with sine squared x. And on the bottom, I'll get cos squared x plus, and then cos and cos kind of cancel. There's still a cos x left over. And you'll notice that the bottom can factor. Um, so on the bottom I get cos x and then cos x plus 1 and I'm really close now. I've just got this extra cos x plus 1 on the bottom. So there's a couple different things that I can do with this if I leave the numerator the same. One is I could just start working on the right hand side now and I can say well I got this cos x which is the same as this cos x and I just need to multiply it by cos x plus 1 and now I'll have the same denominators this is a little bit of a neat or evil trick but uh, by doing that by just multiplying by 1 on this side and I'm not working on both sides I'm just taking the right hand side and multiplying it both by a special form of 1 cos x plus 1 over cos x plus 1 is 1 then on the denominator I get cos x times cos x plus 1 yay look they're the same and on the numerator I get 1 times cos x and then negative cos squared x, and then minus cos x, and then minus uh, 1 in there as well. And some of these terms cancel out. Cos x minus cos x cancel each other out. Uh, this is actually plus 1 at the end. Sorry, a little mistake there. So it looks more like 1 minus cos squared x over cos x and cos x plus 1. And this top is a Pythagorean uh, identity equal to sine squared x. So now I have a solution where both sides are exactly the same. There are other ways to do this one. There is a way where you replace the sine squared x on this side with 1 minus cos squared and then you factor 1 minus cos squared as a difference of squares difference of squares, so one's positive and one's negative and then the positive cos cancels with this one this is your numerator and you end up with the green original, actually the blue original statement um, it's looking a bit messy so let me undo all of that but it is an alternate way to do this and we can squeeze in one last example and like many things in math, the more of these that you do, the more uh, comfortable you'll be coming with this. But uh, I've got a couple of statements here. And I'm not going to touch the right-hand side, at least to start with. I'm not going to touch the right-hand side. It's in terms of sines and cosines. So let's go mess around with this side here. That's 1 over sine x, and cotan is cosecant x over sine x. And this one's beautiful. It's already set up for a sine x denominator. And so, uh, sorry, this isn't cosecant. This is cosine x. And so there's your numerator. And now one trick that you can do with these is you can multiply by the conjugate. And a conjugate is the same as, in this case, the top but with a negative sign in it. And let's take a look and see how that helps us. Well, first of all, it's going to give us that 1 minus cos that we need in the denominator, and then the numerators are going to distribute and come up with 1, and then minus cos x plus cos x cancels out, minus cos squared x, and on the denominator, sine x, times 1 minus cos x. And by the way, I don't really want to foil this or distribute the sine x in because it's going to get messy and I'm just going to have to factor it back out. 
the top becomes sine squared x and the bottom is sine x1 minus cos x and then these sines can cancel. I'm kind of running out of room so instead I'm going to cheat a little bit and multiply this one by sine x over sine x and get sine squared x over sine x times 1 minus cos x and look at that exactly the same on both sides.